Ministering to the incarcerated takes a special call. Stick around and we'll talk with two men with that very commitment and a whole lot more on this episode of Here at Home. Welcome to the Here at Home podcast, a podcast about the people here at McGregor, their stories, their ministry, and their love for Jesus. My name is Mark Bricker, your host for the Here at Home podcast. And joining me on today's podcast is Jackie Allen and Cornelius Hawkins. So glad to have both of you with us today. Uh, thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. You glad to be here? Yes. Man. All right. I am glad to have you guys. Let's get started because uh, I want our listeners to get to know Jackie and Cornelius a little bit better. And some of them might already know you, but I have a feeling there's quite a few that don't know you. So tell us just a little bit about uh, yourself, your family, and uh, we'll. Uh, I might ask a few follow-up questions as we go. So Jackie, why don't you uh, kick us off? Well, my name is Jackie Allen. I've been at McGregor for a pretty good while. And What's a pretty good while? Uh, I'd say over oh, about 40 years. 40 years. That is a pretty good while. Yeah, yes. I remember <laughs> when it used to, when it first moved here. So Yes. Uh, I'm married. Beautiful wife, Darlene Allen, and I have a son, Nate Allen, my daughter, Kelsey Allen, and my son's wife is a member of Courtney, mm-hmm. Courtney Allen, and yeah. also I have Austin London and Isaiah. A few my grandkids. grandkids. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I always got to give a shout out to the grandkids. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So forty years. That is a long time. So you were over at, with McGregor when we were on McGregor. Oh, McGregor. Yeah. I got I got baptized there. Oh wow. I got baptized there. Pastor Holbrook. Awesome. Well we'll come back and talk a little bit maybe about yeah. that uh, that part of your story. Cornelius, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Cornelius. Uh, I grew up in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, I kind of started my journey coming from um, a job I was working with with a car rental company, and that's kind of where my journey started from. Um, I've been a member of McGregor about 20 years or so, and this is uh, pretty much my home church. I've never uh, had any other church, so I was baptized and saved in this particular church, and uh, hmm. just the love of, of everyone in this congregation is just awesome. That's neat. 20 years is a long time, too, but compared to... Jackie over here with 40. It's only, yeah, yeah, I've been here a little over 20. Yeah, about the same time. I think we got here roughly around the same time. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I want to hear a little bit about your salvation story. And it's kind of neat that both of you, it sounds like we're saved and baptized here uh, as part of the the church and the ministry of the church. I'll start with you this first this time. Cornelius, tell us a little bit about your salvation story. Um, I was uh, about 20 years ago. It was kind of a low point in my life. And uh, one of the members here, which was... um, Kay Hornbeck invited me to come to a Christmas pageant show here. Mm -hmm. And so I came to the show, and then I uh, regularly started coming to the services. And uh, uh, Dr. Powell was uh, preaching that particular Sunday, and uh, I felt like the call, and he was talking to me, so I um, took up his obligation, (laughs) and uh, everything else has been history. I was uh, baptized and saved at this particular church. So that's when you gave your life to Christ? Yes. (coughs) Excuse me. That is that is awesome. Yes. And about twenty years ago. Yes. And, Almost uh, twenty one now. Yeah. That's that's neat. What about you, Jackie? Well, me and my let's go back to nineteen eighty. Going back. <laughs> so uh, uh me 42 and my wife, years ago. My wife had a got a teaching job here in Florida. We were both were from Tennessee, the middle of Tennessee area. So just one day I was uh just sitting in the living room and uh and Pastor Holbrook used to do commercials, you know, coffee commercials. Really? On TV. And, uh, and so one day I was sitting there and he, he was on TV he, and he said, you know, it, it's just like the, the Lord was talking to me through him, mm. you know, because he said, no matter what color you are, I don't care if you're black, white, yellow, or red, come down and sit down and have a cup of coffee with me. And it was history. I went in. Talked to Pastor Holbrook, led me to the Lord. Wow. It's been history ever since. So let me get this straight. He had a TV commercial? Yes. And he's just drinking coffee and inviting anybody that wants to come sit down and talk with him to do that. And so I guess the number's on the screen or something. Yes. And you felt the conviction to, to do that and called him up. And then he... 
shared uh, shared Christ with you, and Amen. you gave your life heart to Him to yeah. Christ. That's awesome. That's neat. yes. I had no idea we had coffee commercials with Jim. Oh yeah. I, I, he was on the show here at home just recently, right. and he shared the story of the church relocating from McGregor Boulevard over right. here. Right. And it's neat to see his ministry still continue on into his eighties. And see, when I used to, uh, and at that t- in eighty five, I went to Europe to play basketball, and he used to send me sermons from the church, little to France. Wow. <laughs> Religiously, every, it was every weekend I would have a, he would have me a tape. In little, the cassette little cassette tapes. Little cassette tapes. Back in the day when we had cassettes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is a neat yes. story. Yes. Well, he, I, he felt the obligation to help disciple you, and while you're out of the country, send you those tapes. Yes, he did. That's awesome. All right, so um, both of you came to know Christ here at McGregor, got baptized here at McGregor. Uh, and now as growing members feel a call to serve. Um, before we talk about the prison ministry, any other areas of ministry that you have served in here at, at the church? Um, well, I, I was, um, was going to do the uh, part of the Stephen ministry, mm-hmm. but then when I got involved with the prison ministry, it, just, it was just too much out of the classes. Yeah. It just just collided yeah. so it wasn't I didn't get to finish that so well I, I know something you were involved in back in the day do you and it, it maybe even had an impact on Cornelius coming to know the Lord do you remember didn't you play a role in the Christmas pageant? Uh, <laughs> uh, I was a king yes <laughs> I think that's the first time I, I was, uh, came aware of you, you remember? when you were a king. <laughs> the king? Yes, I, yes. Oh, man, that's a long time That ago. was a long time ago. But that might have been about right. 20 years ago. No, because my daughter, I'm her friend, I guess Kelsey was probably about eight years old, nine yeah. years old, maybe. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah. What are some things you've been involved in here, Cornelius? Um, I'm uh, kind of involved in a lot of different ministries, uh, security, mm-hmm. on the choir, and... Um, also, um, obviously, the prison ministry as well. Right. But, yeah. Uh, it's just been a just an awesome journey to see life's changed over the years, yeah. and how God has just blessed me and my wife. Yeah, I don't think there's a Sunday hardly go by that I don't see you. Occasionally, maybe our paths don't cross, but you always have a, a just a great smile, and I always look forward to bumping into you and your encouraging oh, you. presence. You really, <laughs> you really have that. That's a that's a gift that uh, the Lord you. uses in your own in your life. All right, well, let's talk about prison ministry because this is why we're here. And I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast that it takes uh, perhaps a, a bit of a special calling. Uh, to serve those that are in prison, but obviously you both feel that way. Tell me a little bit how that calling first began to manifest in your life. What what got you interested in that? What started you wanting to serve in this area? So you well, want to go first? Well, well, to me, I guess it's just, um, it's hard to describe, I guess, being, uh, being an athlete, former athlete and just seeing kids get in trouble, coaching football and basketball here in Lee County all through the, you know, mm. through that process and seeing some of our former students go to jail and, and but I started out with, uh, at the juvenile center and uh, with Mr. Jim Church, he's, he's he uh, passed away about three years ago. So he got, he, Cornelius was always on me about being in the, prison ministry here mm-hmm. but then I would the juvenile center Mr. Church I started going with him and then um, I started going with Cornelius but I don't know I just feel the Lord is just well he's I feel that calling mm-hmm. that he's put on my heart to share and and just tell people to buy, about him mm-hmm. so there's a burden there for, it's, it's, for those uh, it's, and that that life circumstance, yes. yeah. Mm. What about you, Cornelius? Um, I came to, um, there was a gentleman here uh, that's still at a church, it's Jason Hammond. Mm. And uh, Jason has MS and he's in a wheelchair. And uh, for about two years or so, Jason was uh, kind of walking around or riding around in his wheelchair and he was always asking me to come to the prison ministry. So it took about two years for me to come out for uh, a special uh, 
meeting they were having in February. And uh, once I went to that meeting there and I was able to meet the gentlemen, the guys, and God just put it on my heart to just continue to serve there. And so I've been serving there since about 2007 now. So just uh, uh, another brother here at church inviting you to come and be a part of it. It, it took yeah. a little while, but yes. Uh, yes. eventually it, uh, it prompted you. So, I mean, there are, like you said, you're involved in other ministries. Uh, and was it just, you know, okay, here's another opportunity to serve the Lord, or was there anything special drawing you to this particular ministry? Um, I think this particular ministry, I, I have a, um, a brother-in-law who's in uh, prison uh, mm. in, a, in Alabama, and uh, I just uh, finally realized that there's a lot of uh, men and women that have been incarcerated and that they uh, do also have the obligation to hear about the love of Christ. Uh, we all make mistakes, and, uh, but we can always be forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. Well, when there is somebody we know or a family member that is experiencing that, it probably did put a little more... Yes. urgency perhaps to to want to be able to to do something yes obviously it's not to him in alabama but for those that maybe wouldn't have a, a voice to come and share with them about christ yeah so you guys are both involved in in prison ministry and you actually serve together right yes you're in the same yes. tell us a little yeah. bit about what what's involved in your ministry specifically i know there are other people in our church that are involved in other ministries in other prisons but let's talk just about what you guys are doing well, well, we share the share the gospel. You know, I mean, what kind of format? How do you? We're, it's more like a pretty much like a church service. You know, we we go there on Saturdays. We have service, but we let the inmates they they are the musical. They the they the they play the piano and yes, they are the and so and sing. They sing. We all sing, but we're the ones that bring the message. Okay. So we share the gospel with them. Okay. So, so how long is it like a, a, a Bible study, a sermon that you're doing? A sermon. Yeah. How long do you preach for? Well, uh, we, we share to about one to three, one to three. That whole time you're, you're, you're preaching? Sharing the gospel. Wow. And yeah. see, we, we, we take turns. Oh, okay. So one Saturday is my Saturday, the next Saturday is Saturday. So we're just sharing the gospel. What kind of response do you get? A lot. We have probably about 40, 41 inmates that will come to this service. That will come to this because it's open chapel. And right. see, see, Cornelius never been doing it for a long time. So, you know, he's you've been there. He he's been there longer than me and Nick. What's Nick last? Nick uh, Nick Trosseru. Yeah. You know, Nick mm -hmm. Nick was Nick used to go on Sunday mornings, and sometime we would. Uh, he would let us go in on Sunday morning, so we'd get there about 8 o'clock, and then we'd have service and come back to our service uh -huh. here at the church. So, but it's, man, it's, it's life-changing. Which prison are y'all in? CCI, Charlotte uh, Correctional. County Correctional. Okay, yeah. Now, you've been doing it a long time. How, how long have you been involved in the prison ministry, Cornelius? Since 2007. Since 2007. Yeah, about 15 years. Pretty much the same place? Same. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, so you've obviously built some relationships with yes. those that that, yes. that work there, and probably some that have been yes. in there that long. Yes, yes. Yeah. What what level? I mean, what kind of criminals are we talking about here? At lifers. 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 Oh, okay. Wow. Lifers. Yes. So yeah. So and um, it's just man, we have so many different testimonies. This is really it's life changing for me. Mm. You know, it's it it just you know it's. It's a car. I, you can't describe it. It's just something that you 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 know the Lord has His hand in. Yeah. So I, you of, got the two hour service. You're doing some singing, a lot of preaching. Uh, do the inmates participate other than play some? Do they do they ever share testimony? Do you yes, have? We let them share, share yeah. testimonies sometimes. Yeah. Do you kind of make sure what they're going to share first? <laughs> well, we you know most 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 of the 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 men that. Uh, that come to our particular services is that we, uh, a lot of them do know the Lord, mm. and so they have been growing with their faith over the years. And um, they're really pretty active in it to make, to help the body. You know, we, we can call ourselves body builders, which means building the Church of Christ together, right. you know, as, as a team. And we're also consider ourselves as family. Yeah. Because there's, uh, you know, in my um, estimation, there's no, uh, 
calculation of a small sin to a big sin. Sin is sin in God's yes. eyes. Right. Man. So, you know, all of us have made mistakes in our life, and, um, mm-hmm. you know, we got to share that grace as, as God that has been with grace. us. Yep, yes. uh, absolutely. Uh, I, be thinking about but I'd love for each of you to share, and you don't have to use any names, but just one really neat, I hate to use the word success, but you know what I mean, where you've seen somebody who has either come <clears> to know <throat> Christ and now they're just all in, or maybe somebody that's just been growing and growing and growing in their relationship, and you've seen that 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 life change in their lives. Can you think of anything that pops in your mind? Let me give one. Sean, this, this uh, brother in blue, we call them brothers in blue. Hmm. So um, he's, he's probably been, he's probably got 50 years, something like that. And he was, and this has just happened. Uh, uh, he, he shared his testimony with me Tuesday night. Oh, wow. And, and, and he would just sit down. He was, I guess he just wanted to share it with me. Mm. But I didn't, I didn't know this was part of his life, though, a part that he had, he had been in prison for, he, had, he was on 25 years, and he still was a young man at the time, and he didn't know Christ. And he, um, he hung himself. He was hanging himself. Because he was at his lowest, down and out, he just didn't know what to do. So he just thought that was the f- quickest way out. Mm. So he put a cord around his neck, put it over the door, hung himself. And he said that at the time, his, you know, when you're going out, it closes, you just mm-hmm. fade mm-hmm. out. So he said he was fading out little by little. And then it went back up, and then he faded out again. It started fading out. And this voice told him, he said, you hadn't tried this yet. You hadn't tried this yet. And for some reason, he said he grabbed his finger and put it under his neck and pulled that cord out. And, and, and it saved his life, and then he, and it changed his life. Wow. He accepted Christ. Mm. After that, he heard that voice tell him, "You haven't tried this yet." And, he and he's it. been a and he's been a faithful servant, and you know he's living his consequences, but he's he's on fire for the Lord. Mm. And how long ago was that 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 happened? It was in the twenty fifth year of his. when he was serving his time. Wow, he was a young man at the time. Yeah, and he shared that with me Tuesday. And I said, Sean, do you mind if I share that? Because at church, we're supposed to be giving this podcast. Yeah. And so they want, we're telling them what we're doing here. So I said, Let, can I share that? He said, sure, Jack. You can go ahead. Oh, wow. It, share it. Yeah. Well, tell him thank you. Yep. That, that, that will bless, bless oh. a lot of people. Well, yeah. well one time we had, a, we had a, you know, we were, me and him was part of Kairos, too, for a little bit. And we were... It's another minister, prison Yeah, another ministry. prison ministry. Yeah. And my wife and them was there. You know, they let us invite our wives and family there during the graduation. And them guys was doing their testimony. And they had my wife and them. They was in tears. Mm. Courtney, Kelsey, and my mm. wife. And the, and the guys tell us all the time. They said, man, they said, after we seen your wife now, boy, they had us crying. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> they would say, your wife and daughter, and, and they, they had us cry because we were looking at them because they was up on the stage doing graduation, right? Uh-huh. And they come up and give their testimony. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But yes, it's powerful. Yeah, that it really is. is. What about you, Cornelius? Any stories stand yeah. out in your mind? I can think of one gentleman. Uh, his name is uh, Craig. And Craig, has, I've been knowing Craig for 11 years now, and he's probably one of the last brothers that's because it's been a turnover over, over the years with different inmates coming and going. But Craig's been at this particular facility, and uh, just recently, uh, we've talked over the years, but uh, he finally had an opportunity to, uh, to share Christ. And uh, I was just kind of taken back. Um, just the fullness of the Lord that sent him and just how um, he says that we need to be sanctified, which means we need all of us needs to be set apart. Mm. to share the gospel and just the love that he has for the for God and 
and his commitment. He's there every week uh, to encourage us and to support us. So, yeah, that's, Brother Craig. So you're seeing Craig grow in his faith, yeah. and now he's sharing his faith. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you had a lot of stories over the years of serving that long and the ministry of of ministering to those men. Now, if uh, I'm sure, as almost all ministries, there's always a need for more people to to be involved, to yes. to come along and serve. Uh, and I'm 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 going to make the assumption, but you nod your head. Do you have a need for for people to to serve in this ministry alongside you? Oh, ab- absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yes. What yes. would that look like for somebody? Uh, maybe. You know that's never done this before what what would that would that look like well it it really it has to be something you want to do Mm. it has to be because sharing the gospel with with guys like that is you know it's, it's, it's it has to be you have to be real you know what I mean? Right. It, it, you know, it's it, it has to be. The Lord has to put that on you. Mm-hmm. It has to be a calling for you. Right. You know, am I saying that right? Calling. Yeah. You know, yeah. it has to be. A, you know, it, it's. Uh, you know, because we all are chose to go. We all we all are chose to be different. You know, you might be to share, to preach, to teach, to serve, to whatever you're called to do. Mm-hmm. But it, it just you just can't go and you know it's just not made for anybody right yeah you know because you got to look these men in the eye and these guys and, and 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 tell them about Christ and they know if you're real they know if Christ is speaking through you yeah the authenticity the transparency uh, yes. is so important in that in that role yeah you're exactly not, right yeah yes what uh you know, let's say someone does have that kind of feel, that kind of call that I'd like, they'd like to be a part of that. Uh, what would what would be their role the very first time they went with y'all on a uh, to do that? What you know, what would be the expectations for somebody just starting out? Well, you know, what was was really kind of neat about it is that um, it's open. You can kind of share your faith with the with the guys, and um, they can just uh, go aside alongside of us, and we can just. Uh, you know, pretty much take them under our wings. They can learn from you. Yes. And what are you laughing about, Jack? He, he didn't throw me under. He, he, he threw me into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had hey a, get up there and preach for yeah, two hours. There it was. There it was. <laughs> it's my first <laughs> time. I don't care. Get on up there. <laughs> yeah, even that guy. So, yeah. but it was. It wasn't no. It wasn't no. It wasn't no problem mm. because yeah. you want to share. Yeah. You want to give your testimony to them guys. You know. Yeah. You want to let them guys know that you're just like them. Mm. There's yeah. no difference. We're all the sinners. There's yeah. no big and small. Yeah. That's right. Now, I know for some people there there might be a little bit of fear in going to um, a, a, a place where there are men that are incarcerated for life. Uh, is there, you know, how, help help that person listening go? No, you don't. You don't need to worry. Well, you don't, <laughs> because it's, if the Lord is with you, and you, you know. And you, it's nothing to fear. It's it's, you, you're, it's safe. Mm. It really is. It, you know they don't have uh, they see they they are uh, they they scan them right. Mm-hmm. The guys that that who are able to come to open chapel to come to church and come. Mm-hmm. These guys are not. Like, you know nothing's not wrong with them. They might not. They ain't gonna have no loose cannon in it mm-hmm. because they know who's who. Right. You know what? So it's. You know, it's nothing to really be afraid of. So you, you feel very safe. It's very but, safe. But also, there's security measures that are put in place. Right. You know, we also, you know, have body alarms, of right. course. And um, uh, so with that aspect that um, when I usually go in, there's a, a verse I always um, think in my mind and say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Hmm. And uh, when I recite that that just gives me the courage and the hope just to keep moving forward mm, yeah and and there is truth i mean we're never promised safety anyway uh so nowhere th- yeah right. so if people you know they'll go they'll ask me if i'm leading a mission trip somewhere well is it safe and i'm like well 
Yeah, reasonably, but I can't I promise you <laughs> that, that something's not going to happen, and that's just true in life what, in general. But right. what, did, what, did, what did Christ tell us? We're going to suffer. Yeah, yep. You know, that's, that's, that's probably what's the norm in America. We haven't, our life hadn't been challenged. Mm -hmm. And that's what I pray for. I pray for courage because one day I don't, I don't want to be wound in my hand by the campfire. Right. I want to be able to, to say, yes, I'll die for you. Absolutely. Because that's what he says. That's what we're not supposed to be. It's, it ain't going to be safe. It's the challenge of following Christ. That's right. Right? That's exactly right. Yep. So there's, yeah, that's a good word. I, I, had, I had a visit a couple of weeks ago with a, a lady that was 91 years old, and she was getting ready to, or no, she had just had hip surgery. And that's, 91 is pretty old to be having mm. hip surgery. But she, uh, she said, I had such a peace about going into that surgery. She said, I sat down and I thought, if the Lord, you know, brings me home during that time, that's a win. And if I survive the surgery, that's a win. So it's a win-win. Right. And uh, that's the way that, you know, if uh, we approach our, our life here on earth, that if, when he's ready to bring us home, Amen. that's a win. And Amen. if we get to stay and keep serving him, that's a win. win. So, yes. yeah. All right. So if folks want to get involved, uh, how can they uh, get in touch with you or the ministry and say, yeah, I'd, I'd like a little more information? Uh, there's a, um, our information is on the actual uh, McGregor website where they can uh, just tap into that and uh, it gives, has a phone number and also our email address. Just go to Prison Ministry. Yes. Look for Prison Ministry under Ministries on our webpage. Yes. yes. And you guys got new business cards. Yes. Yeah, yeah you were just showing. I mean, these are like hot off the press, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they are. They really are. Cornelius was just showing that to me, and I, uh, I said, there's a QR code. I wonder what that does. And he goes, I don't know. So we, we, uh, we scanned it, and it takes you right to the prison ministry website on our yes. McGregor page. So yes, you can see, awesome. see the information yep. about that. So if you see Cornelius or Jackie at church, say, hey, can yeah. I get one of those business cards? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are handing them out everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, well, you also have the schedule on there uh, for the, the Charlotte County Correctional um, yes. when you guys are there. And then also for the Lee County, uh, I know there's uh, some ministry folks that are involved in prison ministry. The jail. The jail, Lee County mm -hmm. Jail. And really COVID kind of shut everything down, right? right? So this has really kind of been a big reset for, for us as a church and for you guys Everybody. in the ministry. Right. Yeah, Everybody. I know Lee County's just now starting to open up. Is that right? I yeah. think. Right, that's uh, what I hear. Yeah. And you guys have been going for a little while now back. Right. But, yes. uh so hopefully that'll all start opening up more and more and we can, and more and more folks will say, yeah, I'd like to be a part of the prison ministry Amen. here at McGregor. Whatever we can get the them involved. Is. Yeah. Any last words you'd like to share about, uh, to anybody that maybe is out there thinking about, uh, about this ministry? Um, one thing I just want to um, kind of share is that um, I believe the greatest sickness is, uh, is sin. Mm. And, I, and I believe that sin has been affecting people from the very beginning of time. And uh, sometimes that um, beginning in the Garden of Eden that uh, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Now it's different, you know, we can die from our, our viruses, coronavirus, you know, of course that's bad, but if you die in sin, that can lead you to, to hell. So it's so, so important to be able to give the, these men the opportunity to accept Christ as well. Mm, Cornelius, I just so appreciate mm -hmm. your heart and, uh, and, and seeing that <laughs> the biggest the biggest need that all of us have is our need for a savior because we are sinners. And, yeah. and Amen. Yeah, going all the way back to Genesis three in the Amen. garden, as you said, yeah, it's been around forever. And Amen. as we look at our culture, as we look at our world, it's, it, it's all a sin problem. Yes. Yeah. It all comes down to that. And, uh, we have the solution found in God's word Amen. and that's, that's right. what Christ has done for us. Yeah. Thank you for that. Anything, yeah. Jackie, you'd like to share, wrap us up here? Um, this we'll we love to have you to join the team and you know McGregor yeah. prison ministry is what it's all about taking the the gospel out from the church. Yeah, who wouldn't want to serve with about. you guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. guys sound like it'd be a fun time. Hey. Oh, it is. It hey. really is. It's really rewarding. Just remember, we're soldiers. Yeah, you know, we're we're spreading the gospel. We're mm -hmm. trying to evangelize, take it out. You know, and 
you know, when we had the mission, <clears throat> excuse me, when we had our mission, you remember when the, the, the pastor, that we had a guest speaker, right? Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how the church we should be evangelizing, not just keeping it in Buttered house. Buttered in, yeah, yeah, staying in, but yeah. take it out. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm praying for. Yeah, more folks to step up and hey, get out. It's The harvest is plenty. Mm-hmm. It's plenty. And if it's not serving in the prison ministry, it's uh, another oper- outreach opportunity where you can, uh, and even even in your own neighborhood, oh yeah, uh, your, where you work, just so like, many opportunities, right? Just like we were saying, everybody's called different. You know, like Pastor Pastor Russell always tell us to go tell somebody mm-hmm. every Sunday. He tells go tell somebody all week. We're ambassadors so wherever you at. Amen. Yeah. Right. So we're in the prisons. You're at work, Mm -hmm. so come join us. Come join us. Yeah, Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being a part of uh, the Here at Home podcast. And I'm going to let this wrap up this episode of Here at Home. And we also want to thank our listeners for being a part of our Here at Home podcast community. And for those of you listening, if you have not yet subscribed to the Here at Home, do you guys listen to the Here at Home podcast? I always ask this question at the end. Yes, I have. You have? One time. When when your daughter-in-law was on there? (laughs) But I think it's another time too, Mark. <laughs> Maybe twice. <laughs> All right. Well, I bet there's going to be a third time now, right? You're going to listen to yourself. <laughs> that might be the hardest one, right? right. Yeah. yeah. You listen to something, Corbin? Uh, yes. Oh, well, good. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. And those of you that are listening, I would encourage you to uh, subscribe. Leave a comment uh, as well. Uh, we would appreciate that. But thanks for listening. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks right back here at home.